Hello everyone. Welcome to this video in which we are going to address the following questions. What is applied linguistics? How did it emerge and develop? What is the scope of applied linguistics? Browsing through the long list of definitions that are found in the literature, it becomes clear that it is quite difficult, if not impossible, to agree on a single definition of applied linguistics. Different scholars define applied linguistics in different ways that represent their own perspectives and views of what applied linguistics is and what it should do. Thus, we find several definitions in the literature that seem to be contradictory and others that are rather complementary. Generally speaking, two major strengths of definitions can be identified. The first trend represents those definitions which emphasize the classical view of applied linguistics as the application of purely linguistic knowledge in solving real-world problems that involve language. Such a view is conventionally known as the linguistics applied view and it is the oldest version of applied linguistics. This view is clearly manifest in the following definitions. Each one of these definitions emphasizes the central role linguistics plays in applied linguistics and stresses the importance of applying linguistic knowledge and theories to solve or improve real-life problems which involve language. Thus, we can safely say that the linguistics applied view is built on three main principles. The first principle is that it is practical. Linguistics applied is not concerned with creating new theories about language. It is concerned with applying existing linguistic theories produced by theoretical linguistics to solve real-life problems. The second principle is that it is unilateral. This means that only linguistic knowledge can be used in dealing with real-world problems. The third principle is that it requires a fundamental knowledge of linguistics and linguistic theories. The second strand of definitions represents a totally different view. It considers that applied linguistics is an interdisciplinary field that transcends the boundaries of linguistics. In this perspective, Applied linguistics allows the applied linguist to use their knowledge of linguistics and combine it with knowledge and theories from other fields, for instance, psychology, sociology, medicine, law, computing, etc., to solve real-world problems involving language. Applied linguists adopting this view believe that there are some real-world language problems which cannot be solved by using only linguistic knowledge. Rather, these problems require collaboration with experts from other fields and disciplines in order to provide a comprehensive understanding of and solution of the problem. In this regard, interdisciplinarity in applied linguistics refers to the fact that applied linguistics is open to every other field of human knowledge that can aid in understanding, analyzing, and solving real-world problems involving language. The following definitions support these claims. Each one of these definitions 
focuses on the importance of combining linguistic knowledge with knowledge from other fields to solve or at least ameliorate real-life problems in which language is a central issue. Close examination of these definitions demonstrate that interdisciplinary applied linguistics is built on the following principles. First, it considers that linguistic knowledge alone is not enough to, to solve real-life problems involving language. It claims that applied linguistics should draw on solutions from other disciplines outside linguistics. Second, interdisciplinary applied linguistics can develop new theories if the existing ones are not useful in dealing with the problem it tries to solve. Third, it assumes that applied linguistics is a dynamic field that is always ready to accommodate new changes and challenges. Thus, its scope is continuously growing. The fourth principle is that interdisciplinary applied linguistics cannot be independent because it always works with other fields and disciplines. The last principle states that interdisciplinary applied linguistics presents itself as a postmodern discipline that does not have a fixed method or structure of research. Historically speaking, applied linguistics as a field of study and research appeared in the 20th century. However, this does not mean that it is the first time when people started doing applied linguistics. In fact, throughout human history, people have been involved in doing applied linguistics. It's just that they haven't named it so yet. For instance, Al-Farahidi and Al-Aswad al-Du'ali designed the dots, nuqat, and Arabic diacritics, at shakl to facilitate reading the Qur'an for non-Arab Muslims. Also, the history of humanity is full of examples of lexicographers who wrote monolingual and bilingual dictionaries to help people get the right meaning, facilitate spelling, and improve translation. There were also several attempts to develop effective language teaching methods. Plato and Aristotle designed one of the first language teaching curricula and Richard Mulcaster even wrote about the need for language teacher training programs. The majority of these examples require the use of linguistic knowledge alone and thus it is believed that the first version of applied linguistics was in fact linguistics applied. The first official use of the term applied linguistics was recorded in the University of Michigan in the 1940s. It all started with the creation of the English Language Institute at this university and the publication of the first issue of Language Learning, a journal of applied linguistics, which adopted a linguistics applied approach to teaching English as a second language. In the 1950s, the field began to move away from linguistics and focus more on language teaching and its relation with behaviorist psychology. In the 1960s, the field began to be more institutionalized by creating various associations across the globe. For instance, in 1964, AILA, Association Internationale de la Linguistique Appliquée, was created. In 1969, the British Association of Applied Linguistics, BAL, was created. And in 1977, the American Association of Applied Linguistics was created. Each one of these associations held its own annual conferences where scholars all over the world come to discuss topics and issues of applied linguistics. In the 1980s, the field of applied linguistics became interdisciplinary by including themes and topics that are not related to language teaching alone. Journals and international conferences of applied linguistics started including issues that are new, such as multilingualism, 
language and gender, language and identity, and language and technology alongside the traditional topics of orthography, lexicography, and language teaching. In this short overview of the history of applied linguistics, three main phases could be identified. Phase one began from the 1940s to the 1950s. In this phase, applied linguistics started as linguistics applied. The second phase, from the 60s to the 80s of the 20th century, applied linguistics focused on language teaching and language learning and its relationship with psychology. The third phase began in the 1990s till now. In this period, applied linguistics became more interdisciplinary and started to cover more aspects of language-related problems alongside language teaching problems. One of the problems that is usually faced when trying to define applied linguistics is related to the depth and the breadth of its scope. What is the scope of applied linguistics? And what kind of real-life language-related problems should applied linguistics deal with? According to the linguistics applied view, applied linguistics should deal with problems that require linguistic knowledge alone. Examples of such problems include, but are not limited to, vocabulary and meaning, problems of spelling, problems of grammar, problems of writing new languages, problems of developing new scripts. All of these problems require the unilateral use of fundamental knowledge of linguistics without referring to any other field outside linguistics. The interdisciplinary view, however, sees that in addition to the aforementioned problems, applied linguistics should concern itself with the study of any real-world problems involving language, even if these problems require collaborating with experts from other fields outside linguistics. Thus, applied linguistics should deal with problems that cannot be solved with linguistic knowledge alone, but call for external assistance from other disciplines. Examples of these problems include language assessment problems, language contact problems, language inequality problems, language learning problems, language pathology problems, language policy and planning problems, language teaching problems, language and technology problems, language translation problems, language use problems, and literacy problems. As a result of addressing such a varied multitude of problems, many applied linguists feel overwhelmed and decide to specialize in doing research in one single area. Consequently, applied linguistics started to be divided into specific subfields that focus on investigating one single area at a time. These subfields are easily identified. Sociolinguistics, psycholinguistics, neurolinguistics, computational linguistics, corpus linguistics, forensic linguistics, first or second language acquisition, second language learning and language teaching, multilingualism, language assessment, discourse analysis, critical applied linguistics, metrolingualism, lexicography, post-human linguistics, and the field is growing. As a conclusion, we can say that the difficulty in defining applied linguistics is essentially due to the depth and width of its scope. There are several ambiguities regarding applied linguistics. The first one is attributed to the type of problems it tackles, whether it should focus on language teaching or simply open its scope on other language-related problems. The second one is the nature of its approach, whether it should use a unilateral linguistic approach or it should adopt an interdisciplinary perspective. The good thing about these ambiguities is that they offer applied linguists 
more room for debate, creativity and innovation in a field that is dynamic, transdisciplinary and continuously challenging the postmodern linguistic condition.